Hey, welcome to MVP TV. This is Jake. I'm Brooks, and we're going to be walking you through um, one of our posts lately is how to be a strength coach on a budget. With my history and being a part of uh, strength conditioning in high schools in Alabama and Georgia, there was never an ideal setting for, um, for a weight room, for a team, for um, any kind of athletic club, and there rarely is. You rarely have the opportunity to do something like that. So we're going to bring you through a couple of things, a couple of hints that you can do. Maybe you don't have a budget, or maybe you can use some of these techniques to help fill in where you need some extra equipment. So um, first things first, we want to we want to say. Uh, I'm going to cover through some, some hints on why it's important to actually do some of these things. There's a lot of people that don't really understand why you would do something like this. Obviously, it's going to save you money. Um, and, and the next thing I saw when I started doing it with my teams is it actually brought some ownership with the team. Um, they got to know the athletes a little bit better outside of just the weight room. Um, and it's overall team building. Um, at, at, exercise or team building that you can use to actually help your team kind of come together a little bit outside of practice and work weight room stuff. So the next thing we're going to be going through is uh, some reasons to be aware of um, with your with when you make this kind of equipment is number one is insurance. You always want to kind of always keep that in mind um, because of the liability. If you're at a school or institution and, and you try to clear this before you make this stuff, uh, nine times out of ten, the school or institution is going to be held responsible for it and they're going to give you a big negative on that. So um, be aware of all that stuff. Be aware of when you do put this stuff together on uh, some things that you can do to make this equipment a little bit more sturdy. Uh, always keep this stuff in mind so that uh, you don't get in trouble in the future. All right, so let's get right down to it. We have uh, a couple of things that we're going to try to demonstrate. Jake, Jake's going to walk you through all the PVC stuff. So first off, this is basically just a dowel rod, and this is a, I guess you say, the highest end of what we do. So we can do a lot of shoulder mobility with this. This rod right here cost about five to seven dollars. So uh, basically it's just one long piece of wood. So ideally you could use either a PVC pipe or I personally like to use either a mop or a broom handle for really the same thing. But this right here is basically just your half inch PVC pipe. Five feet is ideally what you want for the length because that's the length of the bar to the collars. And basically this costs about 50 cents. So it's, it's, I mean, it works, it's, it's ideal. So we always do our shoulder mobility where we, I call these the shoulder dislocations. You call these around the worlds where you just loosen up everything. I do a lot of my Olympic lifting teaching with the PVC pipe, obviously because if some of the players can't use an actual bar that they can use this. And we can actually graduate them to a heavier bar but if we just like put some sand in here, caps on the end, it actually makes it heavier. So there's ways to work with these. So that's really, really cheap right there. Next is obviously the hurdle. So this can be made right here for, let me say two, four, three, about six or seven pieces, probably about three, four dollars. Um, if you go to and actually buy a hurdle for track, they are how much? About a hundred dollars? Yeah. I mean, about about hundred and fifty dollars. That's outrageous. Um, <laughs> Not only does it take time to actually get here and cost you an extra just boatload of money, it's I mean it's a lot more effective. Plus, if you break this, it's not like you lost 150 bucks. You can make another one in no time. So that's on the hurdle. Um, on the foam roller, my favorite, obviously, is a PVC pipe foam roller. Um, it just it works so much better because obviously it's more dense. So it actually penetrates that muscle a lot more. I myself have one of these foam rollers and it's, it's supposed to be ergonomic and has the, the knobs on it and everything. I can tell you from experience, this right here does not work as good as this. Mainly because 
this foam is actually very squishy and soft. What you really want is to dig into the muscle and not really be soft with it. So you want to be somewhat aggressive. It's it's a painful movement. So obviously this is going to work better. This is just your traditional, I would say about what, three inches? Yeah. So I mean, just, yeah, it's, it's, it's ideal. So, and a lot of what people can do, if it's too difficult or too aggressive, what you can do is just wrap it in athletic tape and it gives you that same squishiness to it. So, and as the athlete progresses, you can start taking some of it off to where they can actually go directly into just the PVC pipe bare. So, um, is that it? Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, so the next one that I have a, a lot of fun with is this stuff. Um, this is called a Bulgarian sandbag. Not, not a lot of people use this kind of stuff. Um, but this was made for like six bucks. What we did, we just bought a cart inner tube uh, off the internet for about six bucks. And you can actually, we started out by using these. We went to a, a tire uh, place and asked if they had any used ones. And we started out by using used tire inner tubes that had busted and they just had them over there in the, in the corner. They just donated them to us. We got them for free. So we filled it up with sand and um, to or in order to get it a little bit heavier, I had to fill it up with BBs. But all we did was take some ties, take some zip ties, wrap them around each end, and then once I wrapped around, got nice and tight, just filled it up with sand all the way to the top, packed it in real good, and now I can use it for just about anything. You can get, uh, you can do a lot of kind of really good shoulder exercises. It's really good for baseball players. And uh, so that's just one of many things that you can do with these to make it a fun, a fun thing. You can get your whole team involved in building that stuff. It's, it's, it's a great way to do it. And there's a lot of multi-use. All this stuff right here we can use for different purposes and different things. Now, the counter to that is something like this. This is a sand bale. It's a 30 pound sand bale. It costs about 45 to 50 bucks. Um, when you talk about a whole team, you're talking about a lot of money, okay? And you'll save tons if you build it yourself. So those are some things that you can do to actually help your team. Because when you talk about team, when we buy this for our facility, you know, one of these for our facility or one of these for our facility, we only need five. But if you buy it for a whole team, you're going to need 25, 50 of them. Um, so it's a lot more economical if we use something like this. Now, this right here is a power band I bought from Perform Better, and it cost um, anywhere between $16 to $18 in each one. And then this one, this is a TheraBand, 100 feet of TheraBand, depending on the resistance, is going to be about 100 bucks. And you can do the same thing you do with these as you do with these, if you just lengthen it a little bit more. The same lifts, okay, same thing. And even we, we can do it with our shoulders if we just get on our knees and do that. Okay, the same stuff. We do, we do it, actually this is a lot more, uh, we do a lot more different things than we do with the, the power band. It's, it's so much better. We can actually do all the PVC pipe stuff with this TheraBand stuff. Um, so that's just a few things that we use um, in, in our team setting, in our facility, that you can save a ton of money and actually um, have some equipment that you don't normally would have in the weight room. You always have to find a way to make your, make your situation better because you don't ever inherit a perfect situation. So hopefully this helps out. We'd love to hear from you always. Check out uh, teamsportperformance.com and mvptraining.net.